guys. So let's take a look at the meiosis modeling lab. You are going to need to have an envelope and a lab handout. And basically inside the envelope, there are a bunch of pretend uh, chromosomes and there's sorted by size. So these long ones are chromosome one. And then these medium sized ones here are chromosome two. And then these smaller ones are chromosome uh, three. I don't even think that you'll need all of them, but there you go. So your first task is to draw a cell. You can just draw it on the table. If you get your chalk wet, it may make a better circle, but there you go. Um, that's going to be my nucleus and my cell. And the first thing that you need to do is uh, put in your three pairs of homologous chromosomes. Notice that you have one version of chromosome one from your mother and one from your father, one version of chromosome two from your mother and one from your father, and one version of chromosome three from your mother and one from your father. These chromosomes are not replicated because you do not have the X, okay? So there you go. Homologous chromosomes, homologous chromosomes, and homologous chromosomes. This is going to be your first drawing Typically, I would initial it here. Um, so now let's look at, you'll answer the questions and go on to your second drawing, and now you're going to draw the replicated chromosomes. So each chromosome will now replicate like this. It makes a copy of itself. So now you have two chromatids here, two chromatids here. These, of course, are identical. Homologous Xs, identical chromatids. And same happens for chromosome two, and same happens for chromosome three. Okay, so the next thing is moving these on to metaphase, so your nucleus dissolves, you can erase that. Okay, and then spindles will form and they'll move these, this is meiosis, remember, to the center of the cell form three different tetrads. And these are the spindles that are attaching to those and moving them. On your drawing, there's more spindles than this. That's because some of these spindles are gonna go across the cell and bypass the chromosomes. And these spindles will actually push against each other to spread the cell apart. So some of the spindles attach to the chromosomes at the centromere and others uh, just push the cell apart. So here's synapsis or metaphase one of meiosis. Next up is anaphase, and this is uh, also called disjunction. Each chromosome is going to split apart. Each tetrad splits apart, and they split apart randomly. So it could have gone with the yellow to the right uh, and green to the left, it's probably opposite on the camera, but, or they could have split this way, okay? Or they could have split this way. It, it doesn't matter, it's random. It's the idea of uh, random independent assortment of chromosomes. So I'm just gonna split these guys like this. Uh, I'll split these guys like this, okay? And then on this third one, I'm going to show non-disjunction by having three chromatids stick together and go to one side of the cell, and then one lone chromatid go to the other side of the cell. That's not included in your lab instructions, but um, that is, uh, I want you to show that. So that is going to be this drawing right here. This was the synapsis drawing. Okay, so now, get rid of those extras for now. And I'm just gonna move these to the side, kind of erase the cell a little bit. So now we've split into two cells. Here's one, here's the other. And now for the final drawing, we have to draw four cells. Each of these will divide in meiosis two. So once again, they line up at metaphase, and then each chromosome splits. Over here, each chromosome splits, and you can split them again however you want, randomly. Okay, and you wind up with four clusters of chromosomes to form your four gametes. Okay, 
I would recommend making all of your drawings in colored pencil. Um, and that's it. Answer the questions in the lab, and we will go over it uh, next time in lab.